Well, welcome everyone. Uh, this is a lecture about the problems of Charles that prevented him from concentrating on Luther and what he considered the Lutheran problem in the first part of the 16th century. As we pick up this lecture, we know that Martin Luther had nailed the theses to the wall. He had uh, denied the authority of the Pope and had at this point split his split his church. Charles is the Holy Roman Emperor during this time and so we know my screen won't advance, there it is, that the part that has been so carefully shaded in yellow is what Charles V controls at this time. And so the Holy Roman Empire is modern day Germany. He uh, got the land from his father, Philip, in 1516. He was like 20 years old, so he wasn't very old. Uh, and then he got parts of the Netherlands, Luxembourg, uh, part of France, free Burgundy. And then when his maternal grandfather died, which was Ferdinand, he inherited part of Spain, so Aragon, Navarre, Granada, and the southern part of Italy, Naples, Sicily, part of Spanish America, actually. Uh, and then he got Austria and the Holy Roman Empire, that land, to the east when his grandfather Maximilian I died. So he controls a significant part of Europe and if you look at this map you know who is the most threatened by Charles it would be the French uh, as they are in the middle of a Habsburg sandwich Habsburg being the family name of Charles the Holy Roman Emperor. So his goal is really twofold one to maintain his dynasty and to maintain control and then to preserve the unity of the church we know that the holy roman emperor the office of the emperor really was a catholic office huh, that you had to be approved of by the pope huh, and it only existed because of the catholic church so charles has a bunch of problems for the first 10 years of his reign which is mostly the reason why he couldn't squash luther uh, he was trying to maintain his kingdom and he didn't really think that drunken little monk as the Pope referred to Luther as was going to really cause him any significant problem. So his problems, four problems, the first problem, I'll go back to the map, if you just think of the problems, there's my little arrow, if you think of of the problems of Charles, you want to think west, then you want to think east, then you want to think south, then you want to think internal problems. So when you think of his problems, you just kind of put a map in your head and all the way around except the north huh, are where his problems will come from. So his first problem comes from France. It's Francis I and their conflict over land because that's what most monarchs conflict over. It will lead to the Habsburg Valois conflicts. And Francis was really threatened by Charles and the fact that they were in the middle of a Habsburg sandwich or Charles's Habsburg sandwich. And so he picked fights with Charles just to try and maintain his his power uh, and for the most part the conflict was in the south the southern part of France and in the north by the Netherlands and then in the southern part of Italy so Francis and Charles uh, Francis being on the left Charles on the right uh, fought on and off for 24 years and the main parts of the conflict were in the 1520s by 1529 it died off they'll renew a little bit of fighting with the schmuck wars in the 30s and the early 40s but most of the fighting that will be done between Francis and Charles will take place in the 1520s and I ask you the question when did Luther nail his theses I'm hoping you all told your wall, uh, 1517, that's really a date that you have to stick in your head to give you context later on. So 1517, he nails the theses, the habsburg Valois conflicts happen starting 1521. Charles's second problem then will come at him from the east, and it's the Ottoman Turks. And the Ottoman Turks are evil in the minds of, of Luther, of Charles, of everyone, because they're Muslim. Uh, Suleiman the, the Magnus, Magnificent, is your Turkish leader, and maybe some of you have heard of him before from the History Channel or middle school, but Suleiman the Magnificent has battled his way all the way up through trying to maintain the power of the Ottoman Empire, which is starting to become in decline here, and so he's kind of grasping at straws, wanting the most power he can. He has conquered bits and pieces of the West African coast uh, and the Balkans here and he is moving into trying to move into the eastern part of Europe so he'll move in through Hungary and this blue area here was inherited and was run uh, by Charles V after his grandfather died so in they go they march all the way um, they stop fight a battle at uh, Mohawks I don't know if that's on the map here 
not this map, it's right about in here. Uh, oh, nope, there it is, down here. Um, Mohawks, I'm sure that's not how you pronounce it. Anyway, uh, where the Charles's army is defeated, uh, Charles's brother is killed, he was King Louis, the guy who he'd put in charge of Hungary, uh, and so he was killed, and Suleiman and his troops get all the way to Vienna. The Charles in 1529 will stop the advance of Suleiman and his army at Vienna and will push them back and regain part of that Hungarian kingdom. But that is happening. He's got part of his army over here battling France. He's got the other part of his army over here battling the Ottoman Empire. So Luther was really the least of his concerns during the 1520s. And remember, the guy is early 20s. He is not very old and he's dealing with uh, attacks from both the East and the West. Can you hear my phone ringing? Wonderful. The papacy is the third problem. Pope Clement VII feared Charles V's power in the southern part of Italy, obviously. Uh, so he joined Francis I in the second Habsburg Valois conflict, which was 1521 to 15. 1527 to 1529. Sorry, now I'm listening to a message. Uh, the the Pope was supposed to be the, the friend of, of Charles. The Pope would... All right, we gotta pause this. Okay, back, sorry about that. All right, our third problem is the papacy, and it's Charles and the Pope are supposed to be friends as the Holy Roman Empire and the Emperor and the Pope. Charles is certainly uh, ticked off when the Pope chooses to side with France over the Holy Roman Empire. And so Charles will, in 1527, uh, send his troops to sack Rome, and to sack it is just to totally destroy it. It was very bloody. Many people were killed. Many clergymen were killed. Uh, and by 1530, Charles will then stand supreme over the papacy and will really control them. Uh, on a side note, that's one of the reasons why Henry V doesn't get an annulment, uh, because Henry or Henry VIII in England, the guy with all the wives, when he wanted an annulment, he doesn't get it because Charles is in control of the papacy, and it's Charles' aunt that Henry VIII wants a divorce for. Okay, messy family affairs there. But the point is, is that by 1530, Charles is in control of Italy. He's pretty much defeated the French. Uh, he's turned back the Ottomans, and he's finally de ready to deal with the problems that are happening within his own Holy Roman Empire. The internal conflict in the Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire is really several hundred independent territories. It's, it's governed by one emperor, um, but as we know from Charlemagne and earlier times, that they, they couldn't protect everyone, and so it was really independent territory, territories. And these princes, as their power grew, had very little desire for an emperor or a pope to control them. So the Diet of Augsburg was issued in 1530 by Charles as he turns to deal with the problems in his own empire, and it demands that all Lutherans return to the Catholic Church by April 15th, 1531. It gives them like six months to return. In February of 1531, the Lutherans are afraid that Charles is going to do battle with them, and so they form the Schmacaldic League. We're going to refer to it just as the Schmuck League because Schmuckaldic is a mouthful. So the Schmuck League was 11 of the imperial cities that were basically independent, eight German princes, and one French king. Henry is now the French king, and Henry I will join the Protestants, even though Henry I is Catholic. He will join on the Protestant side to try and defeat Charles once again. The Schmuck Wars will be fought 1546, 1547, uh, as the League then allies with Henry II uh, to defeat Charles. All right, so the Schmuck League is Protestants and a French king. And they will fight the Schmuck Wars, so it's the Protestants in the Holy Roman Empire versus Charles and the Catholics. Charles will win the first battle. However, at that point in 1546, Luther will die. So in 1546, Luther dies of heart disease. And at his death, Charles has really won. He's won the battle. Compromise looks unlikely. Charles is building his army to do battle again, and Luther wasn't hopeful. So Luther dies not having felt like he had accomplished his goal at all and that Charles was going to win, which is kind of sad. Meanwhile, during all of this, 
the Turks renew their threat uh, and start to invade and kind of see the weakness and the busyness of Charles and start to come on in, which divides Charles' army once again. And Charles really calls on the Pope, Pope after Pope actually, as more Popes uh, die and come to power, to call some sort of a council to sort all this out that he doesn't feel necessarily equipped to deal with this Lutheran problem. He feels like it's the Pope's job and Pope after Pope delay and say it's going to be the next guy's problem and no one ever really calls this council well no one yet calls the council and so charles is defeated uh, and the defeat of charles in the schmuck wars leads to the peace of augsburg it is bolded it has stars by it you need to know the name of it you need to know its date and you need to know what it did so the peace of augsburg 1555 makes it okay to be lutheran it officially splits the church into a Catholic church and a Lutheran church. Now, as you guys have read about, there's Kelvin and there's Zwingli and there's others. The Peace of Augsburg did not recognize any of those other offshoots that fall under the Protestant umbrella. The only recognized Lutheranism. And the way that it worked, uh, it was not individual religious freedom. It was with your state. If your prince chose to be Catholic, then your state was Catholic. If your prince that guided your independent territory chose to be Protestant, then you were Protestant. It formally recognized the split, but it didn't give everyone the right to choose. Now you could move if you didn't like, if you lived in a Catholic state and you wanted to be Lutheran, you could certainly go move and be in the Lutheran state. But if you wanted to be uh, individual, you had to, you had to move. You and your family had to move if you wanted religious independence. All right, so four problems if we want to review. First problem is Francis and the French. Second problem, Suleiman and the Ottomans. Third problem is the Pope, and so he sacks Rome and ends that. By 1530, he's ready to deal with problems in, Charles is ready to deal with problems in his own empire. Attempts to do battle with the Protestant princes and, and Luther's people, uh, loses the schmuck wars, and is forced to recognize the Peace of Augsburg in 1555. He will then run away and go live in England, and we will get a new Holy Roman Emperor. But the division is officially recognized in 1555, and it is okay to be Lutheran. That's it for today. Have a good one.